I'm Eric Lenass with TMC. We are here in San Jose, California on the TMC Roadshow, and I'm talking with Ranjit Navatya from uh, Panzura. Ranjit, thanks for joining me. It's great to have you. Thanks for having me here. Uh, so tell me, start off a little, who is Panzura? What do you do? So Panzura is a, um, a software vendor in the storage space, uh, more specifically in the cloud storage space. What we have built is a global file system, a global file system which uh, spans across the global, um, really, a lot of people claim global file system, but ours spans across the globe and provides uh, unique access to centralized storage. And that centralized storage, uh, we utilize very cost-effective cloud-based storage for that. Uh, and when I say cloud-based storage, I really mean object storage technology. Mm -hmm. So we are essentially a NAS device uh, but that NAS device is built on top of this object storage, cloud storage. Uh, we don't use any of our storage. Instead, we bring the storage from a centralized repository. And then we have this global file system which sits on top of NAS device, uh, which makes all of it look like a single device, irrespective of wherever these devices are uh, deployed. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, one of the leading storage analysts, uh, Steve DuPlessy, calls us the NetApp in the sky. Mm -hmm. Uh, sort of uh, um, the claim being we are the NAS of the cloud. So when you say uh, uh, global file system, you're referring to the uh, fact that, for instance, a distributed organization can, uh, uh, can use you and, and looks like everything is stored in one, si in one place. That's exactly right. So a lot of our large companies have been able to centralize a lot of their remote storage from branch offices and centralize it into a uh, cloud repository, let's say, uh, whether that cloud be local or, uh, um, uh, not local, sorry, whether that cloud be public or private cloud, and then we, they, they are able to still access that storage as if it was sitting local to them. So what's the benefit of doing something like that as opposed to uh, having all lo local storage? I mean, those can certainly still be accessed from remote locations. Right, right. No, it's a great question. So today, that's how most people are deployed. They end up deploying a large amount of infrastructure at mm -hmm. all of these different locations. So we have customers who have, let's say, offices in London, New York, Tokyo, San Francisco, and today they have uh, large amounts of storage in each one of those locations, which needs to be managed, which needs to be provisioned, which needs to be protected. And that becomes a challenge, uh, especially if you don't have IT organization in those locations. Um, they, not only that, they have to uh, typically replicate that storage to a, some sort of a centralized location uh, for disaster recovery purposes. So making it very difficult, very time consuming, as well as very expensive to, um, to utilize that storage effectively. Uh, especially when they're trying to collaborate across these sites. So if a user in New York is trying to access some information which is sitting in a storage in London, there's this wide area network which comes in between, making it very difficult for those two entities to be able to collaborate with each other. So we solved that collaboration problem by creating this uh, global file system uh, where your um, files are always centrally located, but these files are accessible by both of these uh, locations as if they were sitting local, so that if one uh, place makes some changes to the file, the other location is able to see those changes immediately. So in, in, uh, in uh, certain types of verticals, like your vertical, media and entertainment vertical, there's a huge amount of um, requirement for people to be able to collaborate on these video files mm -hmm. which you're generating, sure. right? So these video files need to be edited by artists in London or artists in uh, uh, LA at the same time, and we enable that kind of collaboration between these two locations. Now, uh, you, you've developed the, the file system. Do you also actually provide the storage capacity? Actually, no, that's a great question. Um, so storage, uh, we partner with a lot of these cloud storage vendors. And when I say again cloud storage, this is object storage. Mm -hmm. There's both uh, uh, object storage providers in the public domain. Mm -hmm. So the largest ones who we have partnered with here is uh, companies like Nirvanix, uh, Amazon, who is, has uh, is the 800-pound gorilla, if you may. Sure. Nirva Nirvanix is also a market space leader from an enterprise storage perspective. Uh, we partner with Google. Uh, these are all our public cloud partners. Recently, we also announced partnership with uh, HP, uh, who announced their cloud storage right. uh, uh, just a couple of months back. 
Um, on the, so that's on the public side. On the private side also, we enable companies uh, to build their own object storage. And there we partner with companies like EMC, which has object storage uh, offering, mm -hmm. as well as a um, couple of other new startups who are starting to uh, form around this offering, companies like Amplidata and uh, Scality. So these are all the object storage vendors who provide that back-end infrastructure, the back-end repository for us to be able to store all of our data. But in terms of making that data usable or um, making that storage usable by enterprise applications, that's something which uh, our device bridges that gap. So today's enterprise applications are not really designed to take advantage of that object storage. Um, through the Panzura device, uh, enterprise applications uh, like backup applications or archive applications or uh, just standard file serving type of applications can take advantage of that object storage. Excellent. Well, uh, Ranjit, it's great to hear from you. And uh, thank you for joining us on the TMC Roadshow. Thank you much. Really appreciate the time. Take care. Thank you.